Um, my name is Greg Hudson. I'm the president and CEO of the Dallas Zoo. Uh, today we're going to have uh, Harrison Adele, who is our VP of Animal Care and uh, Conservation, up here as well, uh, as, well as, uh, as well as Sergeant Mitchell from the Dallas Police Department. Um, uh, let me first state, state that uh, it, it was a really uh, stressful and frustrating day for all of us here at the Dallas Zoo. Um, it was, you know, uh, it was a very, uh, it was an unprecedented kind of thing that we've had to deal with today. Um, and it started off this morning, we discovered Nova, a clouded leopard, was not in its habitat. Um, we found a suspicious opening in the habitat wall at the front of the exhibit. Uh, following our protocol, every morning we come in and check, do a head count, uh, check the exhibits. Uh, the clad leopard was not in the exhibit and we found this breach in the exhibit. Um, it was clear that this opening was not a habitat failure, it was an exhibit failure, and it wasn't keeper error. Um, we are fully cooperating with the DPD and their active investigation of this. They came in and helped us, assisted with this. Uh, as, as soon as we called the code of blue, which is uh, a non-threatening um, animal uh, out of its exhibit, uh, and they've been helping us with the search all day. I'd like to thank them for their assistance with a lot of the technology that we've used today to, to search the zoo grounds for um, the clouded leopard. Uh, we've, we also checked all the other habitats, uh, and they are secure. We suspect the animal is still on property or nearby, so the search is still continuing. These are very elusive animals. They're, they're, uh, they live in dense forests up in the trees, so it's a very difficult animal to try and find. Um, and as I said, we're grateful for the advanced technology that DPT has let us use. Uh, we're continuing to follow on credible tips. We're getting a lot of them as the information has been spread out. You guys have helped us get the information out. We've been active on our social media channels, giving everybody an update. We've also contacted uh, some of the neighborhood associations. Uh, and if they, they think they see Nova, don't approach it, take a picture, uh, take that photo, direct message us on our social media channels or call us at 469-554-7510. Um, as far as the operations of the zoo, uh, we are planning to open the wilds of Africa tomorrow uh, with the zoo on a normal Saturday. We are not going to open the zoo north because we are going to continue to be looking. If status quo is what we have today, we will con be continuing to look for the clouded leopard tomorrow. Uh, for a little more detail about the animal, I'm going to call Harrison Adele up and have him uh, talk a little bit more detail. Uh, as Greg mentioned, my name is Harrison Adele. I'm the zoo's executive vice president, animal care and conservation. Um, as we shared with uh, folks earlier today, uh, clouded leopard is a small cat. She's only about 25 pounds. Uh, Nova's larger than a house cat, but smaller than most bobcats. Um, and as Greg mentioned, they are elusive cats. Her native habitat in the wild would be dense tropical forest and she's designed for life up high in the trees. Um, so it's a really good likelihood that if she uh, were out and it is still on grounds, she's likely hiding out somewhere up high in a treetop. Um, so we'll continue to, to survey the zoo and try our best to find her to bring her home safely. Um, there are a lot of additional details I'm sure you have questions about. And at that point, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna hand this off to Sergeant Warren Mitchell uh, with Dallas PD. Good afternoon, Sergeant Warren Mitchell, W-A-R-R-E-N-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L, -L, Public Information Officer with the Dallas Police Department. When we uh, initially responded to the location of a report of a missing clouded leopard, we first uh, dispatched our SWAT officers out here, not clearly understanding what a clouded leopard was, you know, we were thinking perhaps a big cat. Uh, so they started the initial search but when we got an understanding of what uh, type of animal we were dealing with, we released our SWAT officers and then we added patrol resources out here. We also uh, dispatched our drone unit and, uh, and they have been out here ever since. They have checked uh, all the areas and so far we have been unsuccessful. Uh, investigators had come out and uh, when they looked at the area where the uh, leopard was, the clouded leopard, uh, it was their belief, and it is our belief, that this was an intentional act. And so we have started a criminal investigation. 
and that's an ongoing investigation so I cannot go farther into it other than that. So Sergeant, you said somebody on the ground possibly could have took the cat? Well, all that's a part of our investigation, so we don't know how it came up missing, but we do know that the fence uh, that it, it escaped from uh, was intentionally cut, and that's about as far as I can go right now. Do you know if it located any devices used to cut the fence, or if you tell what it was cut with? You no, know, well, we, we did dispatch our crime scene evidence team out here, and so they uh, collected some evidence, so at this time, I do not know but it did look intentional. And you don't have any video of a suspect or anyone that is in the area or within that area at the time? We have reviewed some surveillance videos, but not enough for me to be able to give you information to what we have seen. Are there any persons of interest in the suspects you're looking at right now? Not at this time, but we do encourage anyone who might have seen anything to definitely call 911. Well, you, if, you, if you intentionally cut it, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, it's not there. So when uh, zoo personnel came in this morning and saw that the leopard was missing and we came out and saw that it was an intentional act, you know, one can assume, but we don't like to assume doing a criminal investigation. So we're just uh, going to conduct our investigation and see what comes up. It's evident that it was not the animal who took it. Is that right? That is correct. I do. But this is not my area of expertise, so I do not have that answer. That's like trying to find a needle in the haystack. Well, I mean, we, we have uh, sophisticated technology with the, our drones to where we were able to calibrate the heat signature of that particular cat. So we've been searching all over. So we have technology, but uh, just right now we're unsuccessful. We're hoping it's still here somewhere. Uh, but. Right now, it's, it's, it's still missing. Is there a concern with the Well, uh, as concern meaning what? Searching, searching well, I mean, the technology works the same at nighttime as it do during the daytime. But uh, yeah, they, daylight does help a lot better. But as far as the behavior of the animal, that, that's something that uh, zoo personnel will have to answer that. Do you expect to scale back to any resources, though, as we <laughs> Absolutely. We, we have scaled back some. You know, we, we've left uh, uh, a few resources out here. The drone unit continues to be out here. And so uh, until we exhaust every avenue of this or every area, then uh, we will continue to be out here to assist the zoo personnel with whatever we can. So the search, the search is still on? Yes, uh, it, wow. the search is still on. How dangerous mm -hmm. is the animal to the public and to other small animals? I would rather uh, zoo personnel answer that question. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant, before you switch, could you go over any consequences <coughs> that could be um, applied legally to anybody who, uh, with intent maliciously, did well, this and took it out, and to anyone who could house the Well, well animal? I, I, I don't want to speculate on something we don't know just yet. But, you know, just like any crime, I mean, if you go out and you commit it and it's intentional and it does not belong to you, then there are consequences, you know, and there are repercussions. So uh, we'll just kind of leave it at that. Would there be repercussions for the citizen who just sees it, maybe puts a can of whiskers out there and tries to lure it? Well, I mean, <laughs> it could be if the, the, the animal attacked them, that, those kind of consequences. But uh, I, I don't, I don't want to speculate because, again, if uh, anyone sees it, then they're asked to call 911. And so, you know, anyone who does that, it's, it's not likely if they have no involvement with the crime at all that they would be in any kind of trouble. So we don't want to put that kind of fear. If you see it, then you might be out. Uh, we want to make sure that if anybody sees it, that they contact the, the, the police department. So let, let me just say something first, Jobin. Uh, thank you, Sergeant Mitchell. And, you know, we're obviously cooperating fully with the uh, Dallas police on this investigation. We're letting them run the lead on that. And so 
uh, as we, we, there's not a lot we can comment as far as the investigation. Our main focus is really going to be about trying to find this animal. Uh, it's an important animal to us and, and to our staff and to the overall AZA population of animals. Um, and there are some behavioral things that this animal will, will likely do that will help us kind of focus on where right here at the zoo. Uh, we're hoping that it's still here on grounds. Uh, Harrison, you want to come up and talk a little bit about that? Can and I, can I ask a question? Yeah. If it's, if it's not here, do, should people worry? I mean, what does it eat? Is it nocturnal? Anything like that? Could you tell us? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll address the question earlier too. What do I do if I see it in my neighborhood? Um, the challenge for you is to gather a photo and share the photo with us, but do not approach the cat. Um, this is not a house cat. Uh, they're, they're not domestic, even though they, they grew up in uh, a zoo setting. Uh, but at the same time, it's still a wild animal. And uh, without knowing that animal really well and having a relationship, we don't want people to interact with her. But we do absolutely want a photo sent to us so that we can help to figure out how to get her home safely if she turns up in a neighborhood and not here at the zoo. Um, I hope that kind of answers your questions. So we have a lot of native predators in Texas, including coyotes and bobcats and great horned owls. So if you are concerned about coyotes in your backyard enough that you want to bring your chihuahua or chickens inside, you should continue to do that. But I would not say that I'm any more concerned about a clouded leopard than I would be about a coyote in my backyard. Yes, yeah, we have security guards on zoo grounds around the clock. Um, overnight this evening, we, we have had zoologists from a couple of our departments on grounds overnight as well. And so this evening, we have additional folks who are going to be staying uh, to keep an eye out for her and continue to care for other animals also. Um, and a lot of our barriers are designed to, to serve both functions, to keep critters in where they're safe and to keep guests away from those areas. Um, and so we, we design them that way. Uh, but people who are intent on getting past those barriers are, are intent and creative. So um, I think that's what we're dealing with now. And then just watching some of the videos about these cats and learning more about them, it doesn't seem like they are, if you approach something, it doesn't seem like they would be easy to bite or to snatch. Very so correct. Yeah, that is still a concern. To your point, they're elusive, they're very shy, they spend most of their life up in the treetops, so it would be really unusual for her to be down close to a person she doesn't know. So that's definitely something of, of concern that we're trying to understand at this point. People have heard, I think, a lot about exotic pets and people that can clearly take care of them, trying to buy and sell them on the market. Is this a, a pet that would be considered, like, people maybe try and take or try? I know it's not confirmed that this is We spend a lot of time interacting with our guests and trying to help people understand why wild animals are not pets. ...that people keep as pets. Very seldom is that a good idea. So I know that it will be tempting to see this cat as a cat that's domestic, like my house cat at home. She is absolutely not a, a pet. And is this something that would have a high value if someone was trying to sell? You know, I don't have an answer to that. I'm not sure. It's hard for us to put a value on that. If you can't explain the rationale behind the, behind uh, helping wilds in Africa tomorrow, in light of what's going on here. Sure. Uh, for us, the investigation is very much focused on Zoo North, immediately close to her habitat. Um, the wilds of Africa on the other side of the zoo. You can start that one over. We'll start that over. Uh, for us, this investigation is going to be very much focused on Zoo North, immediately adjacent to her habitat. Uh, we don't think that she is likely to take off and move in a direction. She's likely to stay close to home. Her sister Luna is still in the habitat, and the two of them are pretty close to one another. Um, so we feel very confident that, that the zoo on the wilds of Africa side is perfectly safe for guests. And we're going to continue to focus our efforts on the parts of the park where we think she is most likely to be. We have a lot of surveillance video in a lot of different parts of the park. At this point, we've shared a lot of that video with DPD and we're in the process of reviewing a lot of it. Um, I spoke with some of you guys earlier about what parts we had reviewed and, and honestly at this point, given that it's a, an ongoing investigation, we have, a lot of, we have a lot of homework to do in reviewing video. If somebody has a would you like to say to that person or persons? 
Ooh, I can't say that on camera. <laughs> uh, no, this is intensely frustrating. This is a, a, a cat of conservation concern that is not a pet. Um, this is, she's a critically important member of our family at Dallas Zoo. Um, she means a lot to us. So I think uh, b before they realize what a bad idea this was, uh, due to some injury, I would rather they find a way to get her back to us, I think. Is she microchipped or have any identifier or information? There are, yes. Um, I don't know how practical it would be to rely on them out in a neighborhood or something like that. I guess for anybody in a neighborhood, if you find any clouded leopard, we'd love to hear from you. I don't care if it's ours or another one, we just want it back. So, any other last minute questions? Oh, yep. Yeah. Yes and no. Um, they are very much nocturnal, so she's going to be much more active at nighttime after dark. Uh, however, uh, they're also really generally attached to a home territory, a space that she knows. And for her, that's the space immediately adjacent to her habitat. Plus, her sister is still in the habitat. The two of them have grown up together, so they're attached at the hip. So part of the hope is that tonight, with additional staff on grounds, some camera traps set up, we'll get a sense of, of where she might be spending time, and that'll give us the ability to bring her, her back home. We are working under the assumption that she is still here and we're going to continue to scan the zoo for her. If she is still here, we're committed to, to, to bringing her home. But if that was the case, we're helping Dallas PD lead the investigation on that. Could you step, could you step closer to the microphone, please? Yeah, I said if that, if that is the case that this animal has been taken from the zoo, we're giving Dallas Poli uh, Police Department all the help that they need to lead that investigation and help us with that. In addition to the exhibit, No. Yes, uh, clouded leopards are considered vulnerable, uh, which is uh, one step away from endangered. So she is a species of, of conservation concern. Uh, coming from dense forests in South Asia, uh, habitat loss is a huge issue for them. And she's part of a species survival plan, which is a cooperative breeding program that we participate in with a number of other accredited zoos. Um, and so she matters quite a bit, both individually and as a species. So. I think tomorrow at yeah, the no, earliest. Yeah, no more updates for today. We're going to be working on it. we got our hands are, full. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, how many cameras do you have set up out there? Sorry? How many extra cameras do you have set up there? Oh. We have permanently installed security cameras throughout the zoo, and then we have a series of trail cameras that we set up immediately near the habitat just to try and capture any motion that goes on overnight. So uh, with a couple different networks of cameras, we're feeling pretty prepared tonight to try and capture some information here.